Good morning, everybody. Jim Feist and Joe Mack, ready for a preview of the Super Bowl. Joe, uh, this is a game that, I mean, obviously the line tells you there's not much difference in the odds makers' opinion making the game pick them to one and a half Kansas City. The only thing that's really been moving on the game so far is the total going from 51 up to 55, but I will throw a caution out there. We're talking about this game being outdoors in Miami where you can have the most unpredictable weather in the United States. And uh, I'm not going to get too far out on a limb in predicting uh, anything going over down there because if you get a bad weather day, and I've sat through some of those games down there in that stadium, physically sat there and got drenched by rain that wasn't expected. So I'm going to take a... Uh, you know, I'm going to take a pass until I get close on to the game time as far as the total because I don't know what to expect. How about you, Joe? No, I can see your point. I, I, as you're speaking, I'm thinking of the Super Bowl that year where the Bears and the Colts played, and boy, it rained like uh, buckets and buckets of rain coming down in that game. And I, I just remember Hester returning the kickoff for the touchdown, and outside of that, the Bears, you know, I mean, the special team scored for them, but the offense didn't do too much with Rex Grossman that year. <laughs> and uh, brutally yeah. bad weather. And you're right. I mean, you don't know when you're going to get some one of these South Florida rainstorms. So uh, I agree with you. I thought it was interesting, like you said. Total was 55. Uh, I'm sorry, 51. Like you said, it's gone up to 55. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, let's face it, people have seen what the Chiefs have done in these two playoff games. It seems like when they want to turn it on, they turn it on, right? They scored... 28 straight points at one stage of the game last weekend against Tennessee. They wound up scoring 51 points the week before against the Texans after they were down 24 nothing. So let's face it, they have the capability of scoring. You know, I, I mean, they they can score 30 plus points on just about anybody. But again, you got this Niner defense, and they've been. Uh, you know, I mean, the ground game was everything for the Niners last week, obviously. But this Niner defense is for real. I don't think they have a weak spot. People talk about the cornerback opposite of Sherman, but they seem to have figured out a little bit. They got burnt on that one long pass by Rodgers last week. But I guess what I'm basically saying is I'm with you. Right now, too early to come come up with any real firm verdict on the total. Uh, I'm looking at the Chiefs so far here in this Super Bowl game a week, uh, a week plus out from now. Uh, I, you know, everyone knows how great Patrick Mahomes is. I'm not going to shed any new light on that, but you do have to look at what he can make happen with his legs. He made that tremendous touchdown run right before the half, uh, 27 yards. It was really, when you look at it, he dropped back. He's on his 35-yard line, and he had hands and body parts on him, ready to pull him down back at the 35, and he wound up coming down. It was very smart not to go out of bounds. They had two timeouts. He, he's a heady player. He makes things happen. Obviously, he's got the cannon arm, but his legs really, really made a big difference. Not just that one run. But he seems to buy that extra second or two for his receivers. We know that he's got Tyree Kill out there, one of the fastest guys in the league. Uh, we know that he can throw on the run. I mean, he's made those little forward pitches in this uh, playoff run to guys like Kelsey. You know, buying that extra time is key. And if he drops back on third and six, nobody's open, and Bosa's coming at him, and Offset's coming at him, hey, he can get out of that pressure and he can make it happen and run for nine yards, ten yards. Those tend to be back breaking to defenses. Right now that's the way I'm envisioning things. I think he's gonna make enough plays. I think he will be the most dominant part of this game when you come down to it. I respect the Niners greatly. I really I really think top to bottom they have the better roster. Uh but I just think Mahomes is that kind of a player that makes the Makes the difference. He's a different kind of player than some of these drop-back quarterbacks that we've seen win it over the last 10 years. You know, the Bradys, the Eli Mannings who just retired and whatnot. Uh, and, and again, he makes his plays with his legs when he has to. And I think that's going to be a big part of the Super Bowl. Well, there's no question. Everybody I talked to about this, and I, you know, this is one of the first times that a line came out uh, on the game and I haven't jumped on it one way or the other, total or otherwise, and I haven't. I have not made a bet on the Super Bowl, uh, and the reason I haven't, one, is the weather. I'm, I'm going to wait till later, so that really affects, it can affect the game, but when you have a pick'em game, it's not really much 
to talk about there. But when you talk about the total, I have to. I really have to wait on the weather. But as far as the game is concerned, it is two two different styles. But really, and and then you have, you know I'm going to start at the coaches. You have a young coach on the West Coast there with Shanahan. Uh, you know Mike is his dad had a style, and the and the young man is is sort of playing in that direction too. I go back with him to the Atlanta game where they were up 28-3 to over the Patriots, and he was the offensive coordinator for Atlanta. And he, he made some very bad decisions, and he's admitted to it um, in that game where he could have easily run out the clock and taken and choked the Patriots out of that game, but he did not. He, he made some bad calls. He, he was aggressive when he needed to be conservative and he and he was not and he and he, he made an opening for the Patriots and they took it of course they did because that, they're the Patriots and that's what they do but here's a guy that I think we're going to see the opposite thing happen here if you know and of course the game's going to have to play out in that direction where he might have to make aggressive or, or cautious decisions he's going to go cautious because he made bad moves in that Super Bowl and he'll never live it down Nobody blows a 28-3 lead in the Super Bowl, like, and he's got to live that, and he's been doing that. So I see, you know, I'm I'm tending to lean to you, but of course, if the game becomes a blowout, then it's one way or the other. It's not gonna it's not gonna end up this way. But if it's close, you're gonna see him be much more cautious with his play calling than you did back in the days when he was with Atlanta. Now, as the other side of the ball, uh, you got Andy Reid. He's been around forever. He uh, was in Philadelphia. He took those that that team deep many times. Um, this guy knows what he's doing, and he's got a he's got a weapon in Mahomes that no no other in the league. And he's you know when it comes down to Garoppolo against Mahomes, there's no there's just no comparison. Um, Mahomes is just magical in what he can do and and has done. But Garoppolo, we don't know much about. I mean, you know, you can see Shanahan is playing. The run game pound and play good defense and not letting Garoppolo do a lot. But when you look back, when he when he played in at, in the Saints game in New Orleans, he did everything in that game any quarterback could do. It was he was he was magical that day himself. He's got talent. There's no question he's got talent. But when you come down to the coaches, which coach is going to make the bonehead move? And that happens in almost every game. When 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 uh, the end, when you had the Saints, or not the Saints, but you got the Chiefs down twenty-four to nothing, I think it was against against uh, Houston Texans. I was with two hands, with both fists, I was pushing money in on on the Chiefs because I know I was going against Bill O'Brien, who I think is you know at the bottom of the heap of the thirty-two teams in the league, and I knew he was going to make consistent mistakes. And then last week, I and nobody talks about this. I thought that. Vrabel made a huge mistake when he was up uh, going into the about two minutes, two or three minutes to go into the halftime. They had the ball first and 10. And what did he do? Run on first down, run on second down, forced to throw on third down because he didn't pick anything up. And of course, that didn't work out. Mahomes gets the ball, he scores, they take a four point lead into the half. That's where you get coaches making tactical mistakes. If you're going to run the ball on first and second down and putting the pressure on your offense to throw on third down, you are guaranteed over a lifetime you're going to lose a lot of games because that's not what you need to do. You need to shock the other side. You need to surprise. You need all that. So you have these coaches making mistakes. Which coach is going to make the mistakes, Joe? Yeah, no, it's a very good point. I'll tell you one thing that's kind of funny. Almost every interview that I've seen, every TV interview I've seen with Shanahan, at least it seems like every other interview I see, he refers to that blown loss to uh, the Patriots. So you know it has, I mean, he obviously got criticized from here to kingdom come over that, but he has really had to live with that, and you can tell that is a major thing on his brain, and... uh, I mean, I can't even imagine if his team had a you know a twenty five point lead here. But hey, we've seen the Chiefs get these holes. You don't know. But you're right. He got aggressive in that game. I'll never forget Matt Ryan taking a terrible sack. I mean, what they were passing. I mean, where heck, we could. You know, that game was what three years ago, and we could spend three years analyzing the last seventeen, eighteen minutes of that game. But Shanahan, that was not his finest hour. 
And, uh, I, you know, I mean, he, he's, I'm sure he's learned from it and everything. What he said that really in such few words the other day that was great, when he got interviewed up on the podium, and I think it was Terry Bradshaw, right, was asking him, you know, like, what were you doing? You know, you stayed with the running game, and he kind of looked at Bradshaw and he said, it was working, you know. They weren't stopping us, so I kept doing it. Now, you got to look at this game, as good as that kid Mostart was from uh, the kid from down in Florida. Uh, you know, they did lose Tevin Coleman in that game to a shoulder injury. I don't, right? I mean, it doesn't seem like he's playing. The Abrita really was like a non-factor there. It didn't have to be. But the thing that I'm saying is he's relied on a three-headed running back monster, at least two of the three, in many, many games this year. And uh, it may not have that here. So you do have to look at that and say that's, one less bullet for the 49ers that uh, if the Chiefs can somehow stop uh, the kid who had 200-plus yards last week, it's going to put a major dent into their ground game. But I, I think Shanahan is going I, to – I know he has faith in Garoppolo. He hasn't had to, to have the guy throw a lot of passes. He's only thrown 27 total passes in these two playoff games. And it, but as you said, he showed his stuff against the Saints. I mean, people could say, well, Garoppolo hasn't – had to prove anything. You know what? This is a guy that I think his record is 24 and 5 as an NFL quarterback. I'm not going to ever, I'm not going to criticize a guy that's got a winning percentage like that. And I know he's got an accurate arm. He, it, my problem with him is sometimes I don't think he feels the pocket collapsing around him. But again, he, it's, he's not a guy that's had seven or eight full seasons of NFL play. You know, Mahomes has a little bit better sense of that. When he's got somebody on his tail, it's almost like he's got eyes in the back of his head. So again, Mahomes with with that ability, with the 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 ability to make plays with his legs, as an advantage. But I'm not going to sit here and criticize Garoppolo, and I and I trust Shanahan's going to call a good solid game. My question is, do the Chiefs get in a hole early and uh, are, are able to score against a 49er team that you know you, as we've seen in these playoff games, you give the 49ers a, a touchdown plus lead. They're coming after you. They're going to get you. They're going to sack you. They're going to harass you. They're going to make you make mistakes. Heck, I mean, the Packers didn't even get off a, a snap from center. They got rattled, and, and that was a big play a little bit before the half the other day where Rodgers and Lindsley, the center, were on. I don't know what different pages they were on. But anyway, the, what I'm saying is if the 49ers get the lead, will they be able to hammer it home against the Chiefs team that the Chiefs defense has made adjustments and has looked good. But, again, look at who the Chiefs have beat. Let's be fair. You know, I, I, I mean, I like the Chiefs in this game right now, but I have to be honest. I mean, they've beaten the Texans and the Titans. When you started the season, did people think the Texans and the Titans were among the elite of the AFC? No, they, they weren't. I mean, you know, you talk about the Patriots, the Ravens. Maybe you thought the Steelers, if they were healthy, would have a big year. So they've really had a, a pretty easy path schedule-wise to get here. Now it's to the Chiefs to make it happen. And one thing just about Andy Reid, I know he got criticism 15 years ago in that Super Bowl against the Eagles. He didn't have a sense of urgency, people said. He didn't use the clock right. You know what? I have total faith that Andy Reid is going to call a big-time game here. He's got great chemistry with Mahomes. He's not going to forget the running game. You know, I, whether it's Andy Reid's quote year or not remains to be seen. But I don't think Andy Reid is going to cost them the game here. And I'm not saying Shanahan will. But if uh, if the Chiefs can get, it, get in the front here, which they haven't in these last two playoff weeks, if the Chiefs can get themselves a lead and you let Reid open up that playbook to run passes, designs, quarterback draws, whatever, it, it, I, I think it could be lights out for the 49ers in the end. You know, you still there, Joe? Yeah. Okay. You you know, we look at this game as a, almost like in most people's minds, it's like a must bet game. It's like <laughs> in New Year's Eve. I don't go out every New Year's Eve. Now this year I did, but most times I don't because it's kind of amateur night. And this game may not be a bettable game um, going into it. Uh, it. It's to me the game. The game is a total toss up. I, I could see, I mean, look at it. I and mean, one turnover, one bad decision, one missed field goal. I mean, this this is a game that could be right down to the wire, and you're not you're not getting any points. So you can't say, well, bet the dog. There is no dog. I mean, you're looking at a one-point line. You say, I don't consider that 
taking a dog price. I mean, you're not going to win the game taking one. Uh, you know, all you're going to do maybe is get into, you know, it's, it's close. But I will tell you this. I'm just looking at the weather now. They are saying rain is expected. Uh, and they're looking at about 9 to 10 miles, 11 miles an hour wind. Now, it's very early. We're talking on Thursday, we're 10 days away from the game. So God knows what will happen. But we are talking about Miami, and we are talking about the potential of wind and rain at any time down there. So that is, I'm saying right now, I have my money in my pocket. I haven't bet anything, and I'm not going to until I know more about the conditions. As far as Mahomes' definite advantage, I see the quarter. The coaches are probably equal. I mean, we. I know Shanahan's young, but with his dad uh, in tow, I mean, he's got as much experience. He's been a, a coaching family for his whole life, and so I don't think there's much of a difference there. Um, you, you field goal kicker, you might have to go with the gold. I mean, it's a, this guy's been amazing for a long time. Um, but I'm not knocking the other guy, but we do know a little bit more about him. Quarterbacks, Mahomes, for sure. Big edge. Um, it's a, it's just, just a tough game to call right now. I'm not right. te- I'm not telling people not to bet. I'm just saying, you know, if it's a if you're a five hundred dollar better, this might be a fifty dollar bet because now where can you make money in this game? Well, you can look at the props. There's going to be about four hundred props on this game, and I think they come out today. Actually, I haven't seen them yet. I've seen a few, but not not many. But the the real uh, the, the Westgate is where they put out all the props, or you know the first ones at least, uh, the major guy to do it. And there's pages upon pages of props, and I think there's there's a, some nice spots in there. Will be some nice spots in there. Also, in game betting, that's where you're betting the game while the game is being played. Uh, I do it on the computer because it's impossible to stand in a casino and get in line to get to the play, get in in line and get a play in. But I do it online on the apps and stuff. And with sports betting legalized throughout the country, a lot of the country right now, you can do that. Um, and that's where I think the advantage will be. You'll see that happening, um, and and the money can be made in game. And that's what I intend to do with it. No, that's a smart move. I'll tell you one thing, you know, not to say that they make the point spreads based on teams' point spread records for the year, but to just show you uh, kind of how close these teams really are and just how similar their seasons have been. Let's face it, the Niners were the number one seed uh, in the NFC. Okay, they, they got one and not five because of those few inches of the Seattle game that night. But still, they were a number one seed. The Chiefs were a number two seed. And you look at it right now, the Chiefs are 12-5-1, at least according to my records, 12-5-1 against the spread this year, including the playoffs. The Niners are 12-6 and six against the spread. I mean, <laughs> you would think both teams, you know, you would think Super Bowl teams are going to have winning spread records. But, I mean, these two teams have been almost mirror images of each other where, you know, they're covering it basically two-thirds at a time. And uh, let's face it, they both won and covered as home teams, home favorites in in the playoff round. So, I mean, there's not a whole lot to separate, like you said, Jim, about the point spread itself, one point. When the game ended the other night, the packer uh, Niner game went final, I took out a piece of paper, and just off the top of my head, I wrote San Francisco 1-53. and 53. And then a few minutes later, I checked for the first time, and I saw they had the Chiefs won. And I said to myself, really, they can make either team one here. What's, it gonna, what's the difference, right? Like you said, there's no real dog. And what do you... Choosing from. So, like you said, you make a a, a great point that I make to people all the time. I make it to our customers with Jim Hurley Network, and I make it with my buddies who who wager, which is, listen, you're not going to like every game the same. I like the Chiefs a lot in the game against Houston. Now, I'll admit, I was sitting here not having very good thoughts when they were down 24 <laughs> nothing, uh, but I felt a little bit better after Bill O'Brien and company decided to fake that punt, which will probably go down as, you know, the biggest play in this postseason going into the Super Bowl. But uh, I like the Chiefs a lot that day, bet, bet style, you know. I, I, I liked them last week, but not nearly as much. And if I like them against the Niners, it's not going to be nearly as much as I like them against the Texans. So what you're saying is, you know, like we give out the games like on a star basis. The Texans game was a three-star best bet type play. Last week's game was a two-star media 
that's what it'll be more likely they are if uh you know, if the panel agrees here and we wind up giving out the Chiefs, it's not going to be a best bet type. I can't go crazy with it. And like you said, you can't let it be amateur hour. Of course, everybody's got a few shekels on these games. I mean, heck, I got, you know, I used to have mother-in-law that wanted to bet it, and my godmother had to put a little bet on all that stuff. That's fine. It's all part of the Super Bowl flavor. But guys who've been playing like yourself and myself for years, you don't have to jump in with both hands. You pl- You play it. Or you, or you find a prop play or something that you like, or a couple of prop plays, and you leave it at that. You know, just because it's the last game of the year doesn't mean people have to go out in a blaze of glory. No sense putting down, you know, a certain amount that you nip. You know, if these teams played in week four of the regular season, what if you look at this game and you say, you know, I don't even like it. So you pass it, play something else. If you don't like the side of the total here, if you find yourself, okay, i got to come up with a prop or whatever, you play something, you play it small, and you know what? You move on to the next thing because, as we know, there's action every day between the NBA and college hoops and hockey and whatnot. That's absolutely true. I want to give the people a little bit of a, a way to play this game. If you can play teasers and you have a side you like, you could tease that side. Like, Let's say, for example, I might lean towards San Francisco, uh, hypothetically. Um, I'd, I'd play a six or a seven point teaser. I'd take plus eight with San Francisco and I'd tease it to the total. So if I like it over, I'd tease it down from 54 down to 60, 50 or 47, I should say. And I'd be, I'd be San Francisco and over 47. Or if I liked it under, I would take the 54 up to 61 and I'd take San Francisco and under 61. That is a way to have some action on the game and have some fun. Or you can correlate the parlays, too. You can take San Francisco and over or under and do a correlated parlay. So there's ways of betting it, and you you don't have to bet a lot. If you just want to have some $20 on the game, $50 on the game, whatever is small bet for you, until we until we get closer to game time. I am, I'm seeing some rain and, and uh, wind in the forecast, and that will lead to some under betting on this total. And it'll go down. I'm I'm going to take probably take a little bit of a lead on this right now, because I'm seeing 54s with some under under money uh, favored here. So it's mixed out there right now. But with that weather forecast just coming out, and I see one guy out there with a 54 and a half. So I'll probably take a little bit of the under as an advanced bet. And I can always get off of it. It's not a problem. But I'm just taking a lead on the weather. So that's how I do things. I mean, right now I'm focused mostly on college basketball. I mean, we got a big card every night. Tonight I only have one game, but yesterday I had four. I had five. I won four out of five. It's been a good run um, for me in in college hoops. So, and um, and I know what do you got going on, Jim Hurley, uh, uh, Joe? Yeah, we're coming on with college hoops too. Actually, we had a game last night. Uh, we had Western. I know it was a big card last night. And we found a game that was kind of. A little bit, uh, you know, off the beaten path. But we, I know we went with Western Kentucky. We were taking a point at Marshall. And at halftime, I believe Marshall was up 14. They got it up to 19 at one point in the game. And I said, okay, it's, it's a loss. What are you going to do? And all of a sudden, I did not watch it on TV, but I was following on the scoreboard. Western just kept coming back, coming back. And next thing you know, they went right past them. So it was a nice win last night, Western Kentucky over Marshall. The funny thing is they play each other this weekend. Uh in Western Kentucky, so who knows? We may turn around and take Marshall a little instant revenge. But we've had a nice little run here in college. The NBA, we pick and choose. Obviously, you have to in the NBA. you got so many guys with this load matter. You know, I think at least people have seen that, for the most part, the, the big-name guys that sit out these games, they all seem, at least to me, it looks like they're all sitting out the back end of, uh, of back-to-back games. Like Kawhi Leonard doesn't seem to play the second game of back-to-back for the Clippers, and LeBron sat out a game or two, whatever. But uh, So the NBA got to pick your spots, but there's spots out there to be had, and uh, we're doing pretty well. So let me just shoot out the phone number here again. It's the Jim Hurley Network. We've been around since 1985. We've had a great NFL playoff run, got to say that. Uh, we had uh, the Chiefs last week. We had over in the 49er Packer, and actually that game played out just as we thought. The Niners we thought would be in the lead. 
keeping the Packers at arm's length and making Rodgers and company chase them all game, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, but let me give out the number. It's toll-free, Jim Hurley Network, 1-800-323-4453. Again, toll-free, 1-800-323-4453. That's the Jim Hurley Network. You can get us online, jimhurley.com. We've got plays there. So, uh, like I said, we've got, we're have got we a week plus off from, uh, from the biggest football game of the year, but there's plenty to keep you busy in between with the basketball, uh, college and pros. It's been an exciting college year. We've already had seven different teams sitting at number one in the polls. I don't remember that happening. And uh, it's going to be a, a chock-full weekend. Lots of, lots of good games, including that number one team, Baylor, is at Florida, an out-of-conference, really fun game, Baylor-Florida. So uh, watch for that. We'll probably have some action on that. So 1-800-323-4453, Jim Hurley Network. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate it. We're running a little long here, so I'll let you go. But we'll do this again next week, and have a great weekend. I appreciate your time. You too. Have a winning weekend. Thanks, Jim. Bye-bye. Thanks, Jim. Bye-bye. Everybody out there, uh, Joe's been doing very well. He's been around this business a long, long time, as I have, and he's doing real well. Call that number that he gave you, and... uh, Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the podcast today.